We all love some good vibrations, right? How does that song go? Gotta keep those loving good vibrations a happening. Yeah, that's right. And nowhere are good vibrations more important than in the realm of Industry 4.0. But how we sense those vibrations, well, that can get kind of tricky. There are power considerations to think about, standards to keep in mind, and coverage concerns to determine. Phew, I'm starting to get lost already. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and Zigbee are all great options for vibration sensing, but they may not be perfect for an industrial setting. In today's Chalk Talk, Andrew Lund from Advantech and I take a closer look at low raw WAN for vibration sensing. We investigate why low raw WAN is perfect for industrial vibration sensing, the role that standards play in these kinds of systems, and why three axis detection and real time monitoring can make all the difference in your next industrial design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Advantech. Hi, Andrew. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. Okay, so we're talking about vibration sensing over low raw WAN today. But before we get started, can you give us a quick refresher? Yeah, sure. So you know, look, LoRaWAN is a wireless IoT technology, broadly speaking. It uses unlicensed ISM bands to send data. So let's break this down a little bit more. You see on this slide here some different wireless networking technologies out there. What's important to notice about LoRaWAN, especially in comparison to these other technologies, is range and then power usage, which we're not necessarily showing on this. Longer range, obviously, than Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Zigbee. And it uses this 900 megahertz. I said an ISM band. What I'm trying to get at by describing that is that it's, well, not licensed. In other words, you don't have to pay for the usage of that band. So 900 megahertz, you know, one way I describe it to people is in the U.S., you know, your walkie-talkies or if any of you still have a cordless phone, that uses 900 megahertz. So one way to think of LoRaWAN, it's like if you took your walkie-talkie radio and tweaked it to be really low power, secure, long range, have some kind of almost GPS-like location capability, that's kind of what you get with LoRaWAN. So Laura, I should also mention you know, in the slide, you see the LoRa Alliance and then reference to LoRa WAN. The LoRa Alliance is what governs the LoRa standard. There are ways to do LoRa in a way that's not compatible with other LoRa d devices. LoRa WAN is the standard. It's the interoperable standard. And then another important thing to note here is that with LoRa WAN, you don't need a SIM card because you're not using the cell network, but you do need a gateway and then some kind of network server to sort of manage network traffic and security keys and things like that. So that's kind of LoRaWAN in a nutshell. Okay, cool. Now, what about the vibration sensing part here? What are we really talking about when it comes to this kind of sensing? One way to think about vibration that I think can be helpful for folks is it's noise, right? Noise is vibration. Our, you're hearing me because my wind box is making a vibration. Your ear's picking that up through the system here. So imagine like your car pulls up to someone at a stoplight, bass is pumping in that car next to you. You can tell they're listening to bass heavy music because your rear view mirror is rattling, right? But if all of a sudden you heard piano music, say, coming out of that car, you'd know that they had changed the song. Now imagine that you're operating a quarry, okay? You're an engineer running an HVAC system. You have a lot of motors that are making noise, but you can't tell when they change the song, if you like, okay? So that song change, that vibration can indicate a problem. What I'm showing here on this slide and, and providing my layman's definition of what vibration sensing is, a lot of different machines can be monitored for vibration, pumps, motors, belts, conveyors, all kinds of things. There's different ways to do it. So there's portable meters, portable analyzers. So these are the difference between a meter and an analyzer is, you know, a meter's really collecting input and an analyzer is doing something with that input. Piezo sensors and kind of a wired monitoring there's a way to do kind of a high sensitivity continuous detection. So you've got a machine, really a computer next to a motor that's doing that. And then on the bottom right hand corner is an Advantech device actually that does wireless vibration monitoring. And different vendors do this, but th those are kind of the, some different ways to do vibration sensing basically. Okay, so 
from what you presented about Laura Wan, it seems like this kind of technology would be really good for vibration sensing. Is that right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, in terms of the distance, in terms of building coverage, in terms of low power for battery applications, and then and then in terms of sensing node density, Laura Wan is ideal. And, and what I mean by density is if you have 50 pumps in a wastewater facility, you wouldn't want 50 LTE-based sensors there with the power draw and 50 SIM cards, you know. And if you use Wi-Fi, you'd have power and range limitations. So in terms of some of the physical network characteristics, LoRaWAN's ideal. I, I would say it has to be done right, though. So, you know, if you think back on that previous slide, we had uh, meters and analyzers and continuous detection. Those tools create a ton of data, and so that's really power expensive. Or <laughs> you know, it requires a lot of power to transmit all that. So a LoRaWAN vibration sensing device has to be really judicious about the data it collects, the analysis it does on it locally at the device, and then you know, how efficiently it can send it to a gateway. Okay, so what does Advantech offer in this space? Yeah, well, I alluded to on the other side there, this is a product called the Wise 2410. It's about the size of a salt shaker. It takes a couple AA batteries, magnet mounted or direct mounted. We can show some pictures of that later, hopefully. But basically, it's a LoRaWAN vibration sensor. Some cool things about this, there's onboard an algorithm that we've, that we've implemented on the device that report velocity data in an ISO standard way. I'll talk about that later, too. But just know that there's smarts on board that are pretty cool. Long range with low power consumption. That's what LoRa is. So LoRa, this this is one of, I don't know, not that many devices out there on the market that do this. I mentioned some onboard computing, the battery power. You know, if you're taking a reading every 30 minutes, you got about a two-year battery life cycle with those AA batteries. So it's a really cool product. It's growing a bunch, and we're very excited about it. Excellent. So, Andrew, earlier you mentioned the inspection cycle. What are we really looking at when it comes to this step in the process? Well, you know, if we kind of carry on the sound analogy just a little bit, if you think of like the bass speaker vibrating, if you looked really closely at a bass speaker, it vibrates. In this case, we're talking about bearings or gearboxes or fan and pump motors, and you can't audibly inspect them. You can. Obviously, if a motor that wasn't making a bunch of noise yesterday is whining like a two-year-old <laughs> today, that's going to be a problem, and you, you'll know that. But let's walk through the inspection cycle, and then I'll talk about a little bit of this. I'm not going to get into the math. It's way beyond the scope of this. So the WISE 2410, in this case, right, wakes up from sleep. It establishes how long it's going to listen. That's that kind of time domain. And then it decides at what frequency it's going to listen. This is not a perfect analogy, but it would be like if you said, okay, I'm going to test how much the speaker's vibrating. I'm going to turn it on for 10 seconds, and I'm going to listen to it at volume 11. Okay, that's how, right, That's that would be almost like what we're doing, step one and two. Step three, I mentioned earlier a bunch of calculations, okay? I'll talk about those in a second. Uh, it calculates what it's sensing, and then it sends an update, long range, via LoRaWAN, to the gateway, and it goes back to sleep. So just real briefly, I can't claim to be a vibration engineer, but just for folks uh, looking at this, so RMS, this is some things to Google later if you want to. RMS means root mean square. It kind of relates to the power of the wave profile, it's almost like how violently the, the thing being monitored is shaken. Kurtosis relates to the peakedness of a vibration signal, kind of if there's a sharpness, if you would, in the, in the vibration signal. CF stands for crest factor. That's kind of how much impact is actually happening, and it actually uses RMS as part of that calculation. And then finally, SK there stands for skewness. That's just skewness, and if you think about a distribution curve, Skewness is identifying long tails on the left or right side of that distribution, and that can actually help predict a fault in some cases. So that's all that stuff is being combined in and sending an update over LoRaWAN. All right, that makes sense. Now, Andrew, I know from previous Chalk Talks that standards play an important role in these kind of systems. What specific standards should we be looking at here? In vibration monitoring in general, and the WISE 2410 in particular, a common standard is ISO 10816. So what this is doing is it's giving engineers a way to answer the question, okay, how much vibration is okay? So imagine you haven't done any vibration analysis and you're starting new. You know, Let's say this is a, I keep going back to the water example, but let's say that this is a water municipality who's got budget to do more analysis of their water treatment facility, and they're starting to monitor pumps for vibration for the first time. Well, okay, 
how much vibration is acceptable. What ISO 10816 does is it lets engineers know, all right, look, if you have a motor that's this big, <laughs> this horsepower size of a motor, here's an acceptable, good, satisfactory, all the way down to unacceptable levels of, of RMS value. The Weiss 2410 is taking the values we discussed earlier and then calculating kind of a velocity RMS value from them. And that gives, gives the engineers the guidance that I was describing there. Okay, so Andrew, I know that proper installation can be important in this arena as well. What are we talking about in terms of installation? Well, as you can see from the picture here, there's basically three ways to do this. For what it's worth, inside the actual package of the 2410, there's a little kind of a threaded stud mount. If you're working with a motor that's already been tapped to accept a stud mount onto the motor, that's, that's one way to do it. A lot of customers will use a magnetic base. So this is a really powerful magnet that can work in either this uh, x-axis or y-axis that you're seeing in the picture here. And then some customers will use just a flat metal base. The adhesive is, is something that customers have to kind of find on their own. But users would use like a high-strength industrial epoxy to, to mount it. But like I said, it's really, really straightforward. Once it's mounted, the batteries, you push a button, it powers on. It's really, really simple to install and, and get connected. Okay, so do you have any real life examples of these kinds of systems? Yes, I thought you'd never ask, Amelia. <laughs> There's a bunch here. <laughs> well, I was talking about water pumps earlier through kind of throughout this, so I should mention some of these. So we actually have a lot throughout the U.S. The applications that I'm, I'm aware of in Western Europe and Asia, water comes to us and is removed from our use by pumps, right? And so uh, pumps have motors, and so water pump motors are a really, really huge application area for LoRaWAN and, and vibration sensing. So, you know, basically you're looking at a picture of a municipal water facility. The pumps are powered, obviously, but if a person wanted to use a mains-powered vibration sensor, there'd be quite a bit of work to do to install that. Those are also of order of magnitude more expensive and municipalities don't exactly have a bunch of money left over, right? So some way to do this in an easy in terms of installation and then, you know, realistic in terms of cost was what we presented with the WISE 2410. So you can see a picture there in the middle of the little salt shaker sized, the WISE 6610, which is Advantech's LoRaWAN gateway. That's just a, a LoRaWAN gateway with all the onboard network server and security functions necessary to, to set up this kind of an application. So yeah, that's that's one story. Okay. Do you have any other examples to share? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can work through a few here. I find it really interesting how it's so essential in the processes. Like in this example, we're talking about the automobile industries, but specifically a paint booth. So you don't want to get excess moisture or excess paint in uh, a paint mix, right? And so the machines that are in charge of that are basically high-end pumps. And so those pumps, again, have motors. And so if those pumps start to misbehave, let's say, you want to know about it right away before you have a dozen automobile bodies go through the line. And so that's where the WISE 2410 comes in. And, you know, in addition to the automotive paint industrial application, here's an application where you've got pulp and paper with motors and pumps and compressors. And there's a ton of vibration happening there. And when things fail in this situation, like you can imagine if an inadequate amount of drying is happening, you have massive, massive amounts of material loss that's money just out of the operator's pocket. And so having the Y6610 reporting all in Modbus to a SCADA application that expects Modbus um, is really, really valuable. So in previous Chalk Talks, we've talked about vibration concerns specifically within HVAC systems. This kind of system would also be good here as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's funny because you think about in your workplace, I always know when the air conditioning or the heat is turning on because it sounds like a dragon is waking up in the <laughs> vent somewhere or something. Like We're all familiar with vibration in an HVAC system. And yeah, in this case, we're monitoring pumps and motors for facility health with the WISE 2410, again, reporting into Modbus. And so that technician, you know, think about the bottom right-hand corner, that facility maintenance tech is doing more valuable things now rather than hooking up a meter and getting a reading on the pumps. This is actually an example from a pretty large U.S.-based commodities trading organization that does a ton of bulk material movement and production around the world. So here we're actually in Malaysia at a palm oil industry plant. And so when you're processing palm oil, you're grinding things up, you're squeezing things, you're pumping them into other containers. 
and throughout that you know extraction refining process think about a palm oil facility in Malaysia do you have power everywhere you want it maybe maybe not do you have ethernet everywhere you want it probably not do you have wi-fi probably not and it's spread out over a huge geographic area so Lorawan is really a key winner there so I mentioned, you know, bulk material movement. So this is a success story from a company that does agricultural feed. There's all kinds of different ways that these augers and tubes and grain legs and silos and all this stuff can be configured physically. And so the physical capabilities of Laura Wan's signal propagation is really valuable in these really challenging RF environments. Excellent. Well, Andrew, this has been a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? Yeah, sure. So Laura Wan, long range, low power, secure. Vibration sensing is a science. There are ways to do it that are really data intensive and power intensive and high cost. And that's necessary sometimes. But there's also times when you want to do a simple lower power, lower cost health check on equipment. And that's where we combine the LoRaWAN and the vibration sensing disciplines to create the WISE 2410. Regarding the WISE 2410, it's an Advantech LoRaWAN vibration sensor, battery powered, couple year battery life, uh, some onboard computing reporting velocity RMS in the ISO 10816 standard. Yeah, I think those are my main points, Amelia. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Andrew. You're welcome. My pleasure, Amelia. Anytime. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Advantech. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.